Hi, I'm going to do a small tutorial on how to use a regression model to mimic some of the Power BI key influencers. And essentially what we want to do is use all our variables to be able to describe what's changing in another variable. And the Power BI key influencers is a regression model. So oftentimes we use this, we don't know exactly what's under the hood. But you can see I'm using a, a key influencer and I'm trying to describe, let me highlight this, the charges. So the data set that we're looking at is insurance charges. And I want this to be explained by the smoker status, the sex, the region, children, BMI, and age. And what it's giving me is the most influential variable there would be whether the person is a smoker. By that one unit, whether the smoker is a yes or no, the charges go up by 23,620, I believe. However, it doesn't give me any other uh, variables that would be affecting the charges. And it's a great visual, but you may want to get a little deeper. So we will, and we can definitely change increase and decrease here. And we can see that opposite of that would be, if you're not a smoker, your charges go down by $23,000. And on the right side here, this is a linear regression model that has been built using some Python code that we piped into Power BI and did a little conditional formatting. Of course, you can get a little bit more out of this because you have complete control over it in terms of coding. So let's jump over to a Jupyter Notebook and kind of see how we build these out because it could be a alternative or complement to the key influencers. So in my Jupyter Notebook, what I have here in the top is I'm loading in all the libraries that I want to use. And if you're not familiar with libraries, they're just a collection of code and function that someone has built for us, some really nice developers. So I'm importing pandas, which is a data manipulation library, importing numpy, which allows us to do some um, linear, linear uh, calculations and conditionals. And then we get into the models that we can use. So I brought in scikit-learn, which is a, is a machine learning library, and I'm looking at a linear regression model. I brought in a scalar, which allows us to scale our data. Um, I'm not sure we need it, but I brought it in. Then I brought in another model called XGBoost and used the XGBoost regressor. And XGBoost is a ensemble model so it's a regression model also with a decision tree and some other helpful aspects. Then I want to be able to split my data between a training set and a learning set because in machine learning, there needs to be a set of data, training data that the algorithm will learn on before it does any predictions. Then I brought in a mean squared error just to kind of judge the model. And just in case we wanted to do some visuals, I brought in the matplotlib library. Now we may not use all these, but I thought it might be um, helpful to just bring them in. So the next part is we have our data set. And let's take a quick look at the data set. So I've used the read CSV function to bring in the insurance, uh, the insurance CSV. And then what I did is I converted one into dummy variables. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I am going to create a new cell by escape and B. And then I'm going to use that variable DF and look at the head of the data. And just we can evaluate what we have here. So we have the age, we have the sex, we have BMI, children, smoker, region, and then we have the charges which we want to predict as our dependent variable. So this is the data that comes in unprepared for machine learning. Now the first thing you need to do for machine learning is if it's a typical regression model, 
Um, it's not going to be able to use some of these categorical variables like female and male or Southwest and, and Northwest. It needs this to be translated into a numerical input. And we, we can do that by creating what we call dummy variables or changing that into a, a numerical column. So I created this using the pandas get dummies function. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to run that. And now you can see that we have columns that have the age, the BMI, children, charges. And now we have this collection of columns. Now, obviously, sex that's a male, we need a female. But the algorithm knows if this is zero, then it automatically knows your other option is a one. So we drop the first one because it's unneeded and it can cause a little bit more um, complications in your model. Then we did the same for region Northwest, Southeast and Southwest. Um, so you can see there's no region Northeast and we can drop that first one so we don't overcomplicate the model. Um, and you will get different results. So there's our data again. Then what we want to do, we want to bring in that model. So you can see it's a function, and I saved it under variable model. Then we need to create our variables, right? Our x and y var variables. We're going to be predicting with our y variable, and we're going to be bringing in all the other columns for our predictors. So all I'm doing is using that particular data set here where we've done our pre-processing and I'm dropping charges because we don't want charges in that X because we charges don't predict charges and then we have for our Y variable we have charges so if we're just building out our X and Y variables now I want to be able to create a a training set in a test set for both my X and Y's. And you can see I've done that with train test split and I've passed in our X and Y variables and it's given me these four that I can use. Now I'm going to fit my training data to my model and all that means is that that linear regression model is going to learn that training data. Next what we're going to do is we're going to see what our predictors are. Um, now, the way we see this is through in, um, our coefficients. So our coefficients describe how each one of those features or variables affect our charges. So the same that we saw in our key influencers, we saw this number here, which was the coefficient. And if we pop back over, we can see that number here is the same that we have in our model also. So it's going to be slightly different. It's not going to be exact because I don't know the exact model parameters that are used in the key influencers, but we can see it's very close. Then we can, what we can do is zip or bring in those coefficients and then create a table here where we have our features or our variables and the influencers and the co or we can call them coefficients. Now, that's what I did to bring in our visual here, but I wanted to show you a, a different model and kind of how we get the, what we call feature importance or influences with a different model. And often it's, advisable to use a couple different models to get your influencers. I brought in that XG boost model and you can see when we instantiated the model here it's a just simple linear regression and then when we brought in here there's a lot of parameters that we can use to optimize this model. We can do the same with linear regression just with a lot less parameters. I did the same thing where I've created a table and or a data frame which brings in the model and the features. Now you can see that these coefficients are very different. 
It's not the same as what we saw in linear regression because this is exact. We know if you're a smoker, you, uh, your, your charges will increase by 23,000. If you have uh, one child, it's going to increase by 472 and each one of your BMI scores. So this is exact. And what we have here is the importance also, which kind of mirrors what we have here. It's a slightly different, but it's very close. But these influencers sum up to one. So it's just a different type of way of looking at that. So then I just wanted to see what the accuracy of model, my model was. So I asked my model to predict over a set of data that it didn't learn on, which was our testing data. And it came up with a prediction and it was kind of off by about 5,000. Now, whether that's um, good or bad, we need to evaluate. But I wanted to, the tutorial here is just focused on, you know, our key influences. So let's pop back over and see how I put this in Power BI very easily. So this is running off a separate table where you can see the features in the influencers. And I've done that by going to transform. I duplicated my data set and was able to create this table. But we can go up into our applied steps and we can see how we've run that Python code. And you can see that it's given me all the variables that I've used, but let me open that up. So we've brought in our libraries here. We convert it to a, a machine learning pre-processing processing data set that was just zeros and ones. We brought in our regression model. We created our X and Ys. And then we fitted that data over the whole X and Y because I just wanted the features and the model was good enough. So I didn't use a training and test set. And then what I did is I saved that table as output. And one other change we did is that we converted the data set because data set is the variable that you're given for your original data. I switched that to DF because it's just easier to write. And that was able to bring in our table and I selected output. And then I get these coefficients and I, then I just change them. And we simply bring that in as a visual, a bar graph, and then use conditional formatting to show the positives and negatives. Um, of course, you could use those coefficients to create a, a formula and do something interesting with parameters, which I will do in a longer webinar. But I hope this was just a quick and um, interesting way to look at your key influencers and maybe a compliment that you can use for this. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.